Okay, so in this final video in the modeling section, we're just gonna make a few little adjustments, tidy things up a bit, and I'm also gonna show you how to uh, use the visual selector, which is a really handy tool when you come to animating, especially with characters. Um, okay, so the first thing I want to do is I'm just gonna scoot around the back and have a look at the font tag for this flap, because I did notice, I'm just gonna make some more room here, that the flap form tag was, I've just done it actually, but it's, uh, Let's just put this back up to 85, which is how you'll see it when you open the scene. Um, and you can see that the font tag is trying to curve things off here and just smooth it off, which I don't really like. I prefer, as you've probably noticed during the course of the modeling, that I prefer to keep things a bit flatter. So I'm just going to reduce this down and I've got to about 77% or 77 degrees. Uh, looks about right for me. So that's just a bit smoother and it just helps it to look a bit nicer while you're working. Um, it's not quite so confusing. You can see that that flap is running across that plane. Okay, one of the other things I just want to do is to make sure that uh, my bevels are all looking good uh, all around the model. So I've got nice smooth bevels here and they're all kind of reasonably similar. Um, and I want to look at the smoothness of the head and that's all looking good. And probably a better way of doing this is just to turn off Gurid shading lines and use Gurid shading flat like this. Okay, so ignoring the fong angles, which are smoothing off certain areas, like here, um, we can just zoom in just a touch. And if we select our head, the actual head mesh, which is this bottom one in that part of the chain, we can go to the fong tag and we can look, we're on 23 degrees here. Now, if we want to have this all smooth in the viewport, we can do it like so. Just drop things and you can see how that's just smoothing off certain areas um, or you can work so you see flat polygons because the smoothing isn't helping this part over here so if we go back to our head and onto the font tag we can reduce this right down and that's much more like it that's more we can actually see what the model is doing here now this will be smoothed off against when once we start putting materials on um, so I'm just going to increase it just a little bit but not too much because I don't really like that overly smooth look. So that's kind of how I like it. Okay, so I'm just going to have a quick check over, make sure I don't want to adjust anything, make sure I've got all the parts as they need to be. I'm just going to swing around the back here, look at the back of the neck, make sure that the, the socket's looking good and that's all looking right. This is all lined up in, in here. Uh, that's just... Uh, just make sure that the neck is working as we expect. So I'm going to grab the head in object mode and just test that out. That's looking nice. Um, I've also got the heart opener uh, and we've got the left hand and all this sort of thing. We've got these controls, but I want to bring them all up. So I'm just going to hit the bot overall null and just have a play with some of these bits here. Make sure they're all looking good. Now make sure my heart's all how I want it. Um, and I often do this when I get to the end of a model, I might leave it for you know half a day or so and then come back to it and do what I'm doing now, just kind of check things over, make sure I don't want to make any last adjustments to it. Uh, or if it's something I'm doing for a client, then obviously they would have, I would have sent the model off to them, they would have had a good look at it, made sure that everything they want from it is in place. But for the sake of this particular model, I think it's actually looking pretty good. I'm very happy with it. Uh, there's a few things that we'll do and the first of them is going to be the visual selector. And before we get into the visual selector, just talk about the hierarchy a little bit. Now, I grouped all of these parts together um, because when you open your stage 18, what you'll probably find is that you've got the head null with all the head parts, the body null with all the body parts, and then the neck with all the joints and the skin and everything. So what you wanna do is just select all of those and hold option and hit G and that groups them all into a null, which we can just call bot. So that's the stage that's well worth doing. Um, and once you've got that bot null selected, just make sure you've got all the controls in position here. Now this sh should all just be working as it should, but if you're not quite sure one of these is missing, then you can go up to the object that has got it in place. So if you're looking for the aerial growth, maybe that one's not popped up, then just go into your head and find the aerial, which is here, um, or the, the lid, for example. Um, what we might want to do is to grab 
the align to spline there, which is called lid path, is the spline that it's running on. But if you go to basic, what you can do is change the name align to spline, which is shown up here, and call this aerial lid. So aerial lid, just so that this is a, a, a more easily usable control. It's not just a random align to spline because you might have a few of them in there. So that's the first thing to do. And then because you've selected it there, it will show in the screen and you can just right click on it and go to show and make sure you've got the right active kind of uh, selection here so that chain active is the one you want which is what we've got anyway but just wanted to point that out that once you've grouped all these into the one null then you want all your controls to be visible so you can just right click on them and if need be just select them in the right section there um, and choose with the chain active and that means that you've got all of these controls now the next thing is the visual selector that I just talked about. So what we're going to do is right click on the bot and we're going to go to character tags. Now I know you can't see this but this opens up a drop down and the second version or the second icon up is visual selector which we're going to add. And you can see the tag added here and you can also see that there's this image um, selected here which is kind of automatically brought up. Um, and you, you've got a few options in the options here but we don't need to worry about any of these really what we're going to go to is tag and we want to first of all put an image in here so I'm going to click on the load image and I'm going to go to my desktop making it look great 8 and in the assets is the visual selector image now you can use this or you can render one out of your own but basically this just replaces the image we looked at a second ago like so. So we've now got an image of our robot and what we're going to do is put some hotspots on here which allows us to select parts of our model without having to dive into the hierarchy and hunt around for them. Um, what I am going to do is just make sure that the head and the body are open so I can get to certain parts and the first thing is go back to the tag and go into the hotspot section and I'm going to add a hotspot. Now you've got a little icon here and I'm going to make this the overall robot. So I'm going to click on the little body icon I think for this because that makes sense. And if you go back to the image you can see the icon there which you can just drag around which I'm going to put onto there. In the tag what we want to do is add a link to it. So I'm going to link the whole object so that's the main bot null I'm going to drag into there. We don't need to worry about text. You can add text there you could, so you could say uh, just bot ignore the actions we don't want to be using any of the actions so we've got the bot here and we can select the bot by clicking on that icon go back to tag and add another hotspot now these work bottom up so every time you add one it'll add it on top of the other so for this one let's go to the head so we can grab the head we don't need to put in head here because what we're going to do is click on the icon and we'll choose Let's choose the eye as the closest to what we want and the eye and the head all move together so that one's a good choice. Back to image and we can place that on our model. I'm going to place that over the eye like so and then we can come back in add another hotspot and for this one let's choose our left arm. So I'm going to put that in there, choose a left hand so let's choose that icon and also as you select these you can choose the left hand here you can see that it's automatically by hitting that icon has selected the left arm for us so I'm going to grab that and drag it over to the left hand back to tag let's add another one and let's choose the right arm drop that in there like so and this time we'll choose the right hand and drag it into the, the right part of the image like so now what I've actually done there is probably not right I'm going to just clear that one and clear that one because I think it might be more useful to put the arms in first so rather than so no, we will have the left arm in there excuse me for being a bit dim for a second what we do want we want the arms in there but we don't want these icons we want this to be let's true let's choose that one for the left arm and that one for the right arm 
and we'll actually move these up because these are selecting the whole arm from the, the joint upwards. And then we can open up our arm hierarchies. Let's open up both of them. Let's start with the left arm, so this one over here, and we'll add another hotspot and we'll go from the elbow. So left arm, elbow, and this one is where we'll put the left hand. And we'll drag that over because this means that we can select just this object. So we can go for the whole arm or we can go for just the hand. And because the hand is attached, it kind of pivots around this elbow, we can now use the rotate tool and we can rotate the, the forearm and the hand all from that one selection. I just undo that move or I could select the head like so. And you can see that the neck is moving with it in the background there. I could go into my just move and I can move that around like so, or I could take the whole robot and I could move the whole robot around. So let's go back to our tags and we'll add another tag and this one will be the right elbow. So I'll drag that in there and we'll make this the right hand icon. Pop that into place and we're looking pretty good. Now I'm actually going to just space these out a little bit, not too much, um, but just so that it makes it easier to select things as we're working. Now the main benefit to using the visual selector is that you could go ahead, let's just close that down for a minute, we could go ahead and we can close down all these different menus if we wanted to, we can close that one down, we could um, we can either hide it or we can kill it off, we can just close that manager in fact, um, we could go to our modelling selection tools down here on the right, we could close that manager, we could close the material manager and the coordinates manager, although I probably wouldn't kill that one off. Um, and we could get rid of the attributes over here if we don't want to use it and then we can make our objects even smaller or we can kill off that manager what you could do is just open the visual selector let's just hide this for a minute get that out of the way now I work on dual screen and I would usually have this just over to the left of my main 3d viewport um, which should actually be about four times the size you're seeing here um, and then I'd have my timeline and a few other windows open over to the left as well, which gives me bucket loads of room to animate in. And using a visual selector just means you can select objects without having to trawl your way through um, the, the object manager over here. You don't have to worry about it. You can close it down completely if you want. All you need is this one section, animate, select the next bit, animate that, so on and so forth. And because of the way we set up, I'm just going to close that. Because of the way we set up our different controls here, they'll always be in the viewport once you select a part of the model. So even though we haven't selected the bot here and the controls aren't visible, we could be working on another part of the scene, say maybe there's a car driving past him, we could animate that. And then when we want to come back here, maybe he's going to react to that car and maybe the aerial is going to pop up and try and do something there. Or all we do is just select it and then we've got our controls. Okay, so that's a, an introduction to using the visual selector and it really is quite a powerful tool or a very useful tool and it can save an awful lot of time. Okay, so I'm just going to reset my viewport to my standard layout. So I'm going to go to my layout and just set that back to my normal one for the tutorials. Now, one just thing that I should mention before we finish up is if you're going to be using this on maybe a different computer or you're going to send it to somebody else for animating, which does happen, and um, things like the images here uh, in the visual selector and if you've got any decals applied to the model which we'll do in uh, one of the future videos when you save out your model the ideal way of doing it is to come to file and then save project and if we just I'll just pop this on my desktop let's just call this bot I'll just call this bot export for now just for the sake of it what this will do is I'll press save give it a second to go through everything and this is got these two textures here applied and I'm just going to bring this back uh, but open up that folder on my desktop to show you what's got so I've got the cinema 4d file here and also a folder called text and that will keep 
my eye base movie which we made um, uh, over here that was going to be kind of stored in this texture folder and any other textures that we paint uh, will be stored in that folder as well now this movie um, is just here to help us uh, look at the eye at the moment I just put that in there for, for the moment now we are going to go in and I'll teach you how to make this in one of the next videos as well um, so don't worry that you haven't got to this stage yet you haven't missed it we just haven't got to that part yet um, but it's coming up very soon um, so it's just just worth keeping in mind to save a project as um, as a project rather than just a cinema 4d file uh, just to kind of collate all the different uh, assets that you've got in a in a project um, to send it to somebody else and I just thought I'd better mention that okay so you can save this and now all the modeling is done you've got all the animation controls are set up we've got our visual selector uh, which you can put wherever you want um, you can dock it still using the same controls by right clicking over here you can undock it and then pop it somewhere else just by clicking and dragging you could pop it over here or or whatever now that was horrible but you get the idea you can move that around um, so yeah, that's the model done and I'm wondering if uh, you've got a model that's looking exactly the same as mine or if you've done something completely different with yours and gone a bit crazy or done something funky with it. Um, but uh, as I said earlier, let's um, move on to making some materials and then we'll move on to some rendering and I would love to see what you come up with, uh, even if it's exactly the same as this, I'd still like to see it just to know how you've got on. So let's call it a day for modeling and I'll see you over in the texturing section.